morning, pleasant parishioners and partners of PG. Uh, we're thankful for all of you who have logged in today and thank God for our virtual visitors. Today, I just want to give you a great shout out to all of my mothers, to all of my mothers. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. I want to give that shout out uh, to all of those who are biological mothers. Uh, Happy Mother's Day. If you are a, a guardian uh, of a child, if you help raise a child, I just want to wish you Happy Mother's Day. If you have operated in the capacity of a mother, Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers and to all of our parishioners. Uh, we bless God for you during this time. Today, we're going to jump into our worship. I pray that you're blessed by uh, the songs that we will share. And brothers and sisters, we're going to jump into John, uh, where Jesus Christ is leaving his mother some more work to do. I pray that this will be a blessing to you. I, play, I pray that something meaningful is said today during this worship service. God bless you. I am
by the grace of God, I want y'all to clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands. Come on and clap your hands. If you can't find the grace of God, I want you to clap your hands. Come on and clap your hands. Come on and clap your hands. Oh, clap your hands. Let the church sing. I want y'all to clap your hands. Let me see you clap your hands. Let me see you clap your hands. If you think for for it's great, let me clap your hands. Let me see you clap your hands. Let me see you clap your hands. Oh, clap your hands. Let the church say. Let me see you clap your hands. If you're thankful for his grace, let me see you clap your hands. Let me see you clap your hands. Everybody clap your hands. Oh, clap your hands. Let the church say. songs 
was my mother's joy. While at the shadows of the close of the day, as I said there on my mother's knee in those days it used to be my mother would sing God's Amazing, amazing grace. My mother was so good, so good and kind. She told me, son, you'll never find no other than would share your, your griefs and your woes. So I, I took her, oh, at her word. Now find Blessed Lord, and now, right now, my mother's God is mine. Thank you. Let's give God praise. As we go into the text, brothers and sisters, it is important that before we share the word of God that we consult with God. So let us go before God in prayer. God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for this time of worship. We thank you for this time of word. And God, we pray that someone's heart is pricked, God. Someone's life is changed uh, because of the sharing of the gospel. God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O oh Lord, my strength, our strength, my Redeemer, our Redeemer, let us all say amen. Brothers and sisters, if you would, let us jump into the Word of God. Let us jump into the Word of God. Let us jump into the book of John, John the 19th chapter, John the 19th chapter. John the 19th chapter, and we will read the 25th through the 27th verses. Amen. We will read John 19, 25 through 27. And I just think it would be a good virtual exercise since perhaps we may not have been out of the house. We may not have been jogging. Hey, let us just stand to read the word of God. Let us just stand to read the word of God. Amen. Let us just stand to read the word of God. We want to stand to read the word of God. And you will find words uh, close to this depending upon the translation that you're reading. I'm reading uh, the King James Version uh, for this particular instance because I like the language that is used. Here... It says, near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there, and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Mama, here is your son. 
He says woman in the text. But what I share with you is the intimacy of the term. He's saying, mama, here's your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her unto his home. And brothers and sisters, just for a little while, I want to speak with you about the devotion of a faithful mother. The devotion of a faithful mother. We all know, brothers and sisters, we all know that a mother is entrusted with one of the greatest responsibilities of humanity. And that is the task of bearing, cultivating, and rearing children. Now, my brothers and sisters, it is by no means meant for that to be a chauvinistic statement. But we must recognize that the mother has been infused with certain indistinguishable nurturing characteristics that we fathers, we just don't possess. And I'm sure that most true and genuine mothers can agree with me as I say that a mother's job is never done. A mother's job is never done. A mother never finishes being a mother. Her duties do not end once her child has fallen asleep, as I've watched Katrina. Her duties do not end as brothers and sisters once her babies are tucked in at night. And I would push further to say that a mother's responsibilities reach far beyond the perimeters of providing a child with money. A mother does not resign uh, after her child has reached even the maturity of adulthood. Mary is an example of a true mother. For a mother's love is unfailing. It is reliable as I've experienced life with a woman named Sadie Heaston. Brothers and sisters, that love is unshakable. That love is unyielding. That love is unconditional. And it is also important for me to note here for our consideration that a true mother can be either biological or a true mother can also be a surrogate. In other words, a true mother can be one who birthed you in the world or a true mother can have no blood ties to you at all, but she, she took care of you as you were being nurtured. And I just believe that there's someone in the virtual world who can rejoice in the testimony that they found a mother uh, in a grandmother. Someone found a grandmother in an aunt. Someone found a mother in a sister. And it is a blessing, brothers and sisters, that we find these mother figures who desire to take care of us and to be selfless to provide some help for us, even though they neglect themselves. My brothers and sisters, we ought to be thankful to God that God has assigned us good mothers. In the world of the text, Mary is standing at the foot of the cross where she's watching her son, Jesus, as Jesus is being crucified. 
Brothers and sisters, she has endured the horror of crucifixion. Mary followed Jesus in his ministry. She followed her son's ministry. She listened to her son's teaching. She stood with him at the cross. Mothers, in times like these, children need guardians, brothers and sisters, who will unswervingly follow Jesus Christ. This also suggests to me that uh, a concerned mother keeps up with her children. Whether they are soaring through the skies of success, or brothers and sisters, or if they have fallen through the cracks of disappointment, a mother is concerned about her child. How many mothers, and I, brothers and sisters, say this in the African-American context, how many mothers' uh, hearts are broken because uh, a mother is concerned about her child as they leave home? There are so many instances, the young man that was killed uh, just because he wanted to jog, brothers and sisters. We have so many young men who live their lives and a mother is concerned as they leave home. Mothers, you ought to be concerned enough about your child to monitor your child's activities. So many children have joined gangs. So many children have committed crimes. So many children have served time. So many children have given in to peer pressure, tied in to drugs, and made dreadful mistakes because a mother was not perhaps concerned enough about them to follow them, to monitor, monitor their activities, to support their ambitions, to drive them to do better, to push them with a sense of urgency, to tell them to get up. You are somebody, brothers and sisters, as mothers, and I'm not telling you how to do your job, but brothers and sisters, the world needs today more than any other time godly mothers who love to serve God and promote their children before the presence of the Lord. Mothers understand that their job has to take a certain level of perseverance. As we pay attention to uh, the text, we see that Jesus said, woman, behold your son. He says, woman, behold your son. In other words, Jesus, at this particular point and at this juncture, he was giving his mother a new assignment. Jesus gave his mother a new assignment as he was preparing to leave her. He gave her a fresh start and a new journey and a renewed purpose because her mission as his biological custodian was now complete. And let me just tell somebody right now that Jesus can repurpose your life. Your children might be gone and grown, but I share this with you, brothers and sisters, God can repurpose you so that you can be a mentor to someone else. Jesus can repurpose your life. So many people, brothers and sisters, they halt in doing what is helpful. There are so many people stop on their sojourn for the Savior after they perceived that their plight is finished. We have an entire community of black children who are in need of mentorship. We have an entire community of children. After you have helped your own children, there is someone else who needs a motherly figure to give them direction. 
As a matter of fact, we have been crying in the wilderness for someone to come help us with our neighborhood children. Uh, brothers and sisters, we have been crying for someone to help us uh, with those children that have no mentorship. Jesus, again, brothers and sisters, can renew your purpose. Even when the world has rendered you useless. In other words, brothers and sisters, uh, mothers who are facing vacancies, mothers who are facing an empty nest, I want you to know that God still has his hand upon you. And as God has his hand upon you, God still gives you purpose and God still gives you direction. In other words, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, there is someone close to you who needs direction. Young ladies, those of you who have perhaps uh, endure the pain of miscarriage. Uh, brothers and sisters, those of you who have endured the pain of uh, experiencing uh, a child's father who is nowhere to be found or nowhere around, God is not finished with you and God yet and still has a purpose for you. This places us doorsteps of our last point. Jesus makes provisions. Jesus made provisions for his mother because of her faithfulness. In the world behind the text, one must understand that in the Jewish tradition, after a woman's husband dies, Jewish law obligates her son to care for his mother. The harsh reality is that normally women owned nothing at that time. And here Mary is at the foot of the cross where her son is dying and James, her other son, is nowhere around. So not only is Mary grieving the loss of her son, she is now anxious and apprehensive about her own future and the provision because widows without beneficiaries were at the mercy of Jewish society. They were among the marginalized, but Jesus looks down and he takes a moment enough to share that his mother, uh, and he makes provisions for her, even while he was dying on the cross, even while, brothers and sisters, it seemed like hope was lost, even though it seemed like no one cared about her, Jesus made provisions for his mother while he was dying on the cross. And I want to talk to somebody in the virtual world today that is experiencing loneliness, that it is experiencing feeling like no one cares. I want you to know that Jesus is caring and Jesus is making provisions for you right now. Jesus looks down at his mother he makes provisions for her. And while he is dying, he says, Son, uh, behold your mother. He entrusts his mother, brothers and sisters, to John, thereby making a way uh, where there seemed like it was no way. I I'm going to shout here by myself because if you don't know Jesus, I want you to get to know him because Jesus is known for making a way out of no way. Jesus is known 
for being a bridge over troubled waters. Jesus is known for being a rock of ages. Uh, Jesus is known for being a rock in a weary land. Jesus is known for being an umbrella in the time of rain. Jesus is known for being a shelter in a weary land. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is known for providing for us even though we do not have. And brothers and sisters, when you are faithful to the Lord, when you follow Jesus, the Lord will make provisions for you in your life. And I want to shout on that note because I just know how God makes provisions for us in our lives. God does things uh, behind the scenes. I'm encouraged uh, by David. David says, I have been young in the 37th increment of son. He says, I have been young, but now I'm old. He can shout because he's seen what God has done in his life. He says, I've been young and now I'm old. And I wonder, is there anybody out there in virtual land that has been young, but yet when you look at the experience that you have with God, you see that God has done some things that you couldn't do on your own. You see that God has made ways that no man, uh, ways out of no ways. He's opened doors that no man can uh, uh, close. He's closed doors that no man can open. Brothers and sisters, God is able to do amazing things in our lives. David said, I've been young. But now I am old, but yet have I seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed to beg for bread. And I want to remind us, even during this time uh, of pandemic, Philippians 4.19 says, But my God shall supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I thank God for what God is doing. And I know I told little Avery to be quiet, but she's trying to give daddy a hand clap of praise because she's experienced how God has even worked in her little baby life. Brothers and sisters, what I share with you is that God can work even though you feel like you're out of work. Brothers and sisters, I want to pause to tell you that God still works and God still is, uh, God still cares and God still creates provisions for you in your life. I want to pause now. Uh, I know I'm getting a little bit excited on uh, this Mother's Day weekend uh, and I want to share with you brothers and sisters that the door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. If you would like to join the church, brothers and sisters, uh, I just want you to reach out. I want you to reach out if you want to comment uh, in the comment section of uh, Pleasant Green uh, TV. Uh, you can do so in the comment section or you can reach out at ghpruitt uh, at gmail.com. And we'll have someone to respond to you within 48 hours. The door of God's church is open. The door of God's church is open. Also, we thank God for all of those who are logging in. We thank God for our virtual visitors. We thank God for all of our guests. Uh, and for those guests, we share this with you. We uh, are church we're trying to be pleasantly purposeful for all people. With that being said, we want to tell this to you. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. Brothers and sisters, also a few other things I want to share with you as we prepare to dismiss. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that you, we are grateful for your uh, generosity. We are grateful for your generosity. We thank God for your continued generosity. 
And I want to just take a moment uh, to say to those of you who perhaps may not have been uh, in the church building, I want you to know this. Uh, God still requires for us to be faithful. And we want you to stay faithful. And I just believe and I'm persuaded that God will continue to care and take care of us, brothers and sisters. We want you to stay faithful. We want you to stay faithful. We want you to stay faithful. With that being said, brothers and sisters, we've had, uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I've kind of gotten happy uh, even uh, in the presence of God. And I pray that there has been some furniture moving uh, in your context. And I pray that God is visiting you uh, even in this time of virtual worship. And I want you to know that although we are distancing ourselves, we're practicing social distance, I want you to know that God is not distant from you. God is not distant from you. With that being said, brothers and sisters, we want to just end uh, by just sharing a word of benediction. And that word of benediction says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of God's glory with exceedingly joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. May we all say, Amen.